now, let's get to the application here. Let's get to something very important. How does it work? How do I make this work in my life? Well, there are many methods to Lectio Divina, many, many ways that, uh, that we could use this. As you read through church history, you read what others had to say about it. They used it and outlined it in many different ways. But let me share with you how one group did it, and then I want to share with you um, my outline as well, okay? A priest went to Italy and went to a retreat house out in the country with a group of young people. And they would begin their time together in a room that he called the School of the Word, all right? So they would get together, they would study a passage of Scripture. And then, after they studied the passage of Scripture, they would leave that school, whatever it's called, School of the Word, and go into a chapel. And in the chapel, he had already been there and, and pre-planned it all. All over the chapel, on sheets of paper, were passages that they had just studied all over the place, taped along the walls of the chapel. And so now, after this group had spent some time studying the Word, they are now in this chapel, and now slowly... They're just kind of looking at the wall, looking at the paper stake there, slowly reading, slowly savoring, slowly trying to understand and encounter what the Word is saying. And then he asked them to go outside and kind of in small groups, they would ask themselves these three questions, okay? These are the three questions these are the three questions that he would have them ask to, to each other in their group. First of all, what does this passage say to my head? All right? What does this passage say to my heart? Third, what does this passage say to my hands? Head, heart, and hands. All of us are called to know the Lord, to love the Lord. And these are questions we need to ask ourselves when we work our way through um, His Word. So, what does this passage say to my head? As, as I read the Word, as I encounter the Word of God, what is it showing me? What is it teaching me about the Lord? What is it showing me about His commands, His principles, His precepts? What does the Word of God say to my heart? What is it saying to me? How is it leading me to love the Lord? How is it leading me to love others? And third, what does it say to my hands? What is the Word of God right now calling me to do? What is it asking me to do practically in my life of discipleship? What is it telling me and asking me to do? Now listen, if you ask these three questions in your quiet time, consistently it's going to change your life. You will be transformed. Now, how many of you have your Bibles with you? Okay. If not, probably a cell phone or something you have. Or you can take a look. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. And this is a fresh example because this is what I read in my quiet time this morning. It's my second time through Colossians. And uh, I'll probably read it three or four more times before I, I, uh, I'm done. But um, take a look at Colossians 3. Okay, Very rich passage. All right, everybody there? Amen. Okay. Somebody read verse 1. <clears throat> if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. And what a voice. Keep reading. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Okay, go to verse 5. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay, let's stop there. So we have verses 1 through 3 and verse 5. And already in this passage, Paul is admonishing us to do some things, okay? So as you read this, and look at it again. Just kind of look down at it, glance at it. Everyone just, just take about 15 seconds to read it to yourself, okay? Can you do that? So I want you to get this passage in your mind. Okay. What is this passage saying to my to my head? How is it leading?
leading me to love God? How is it leading me? What, or rather, what is it teaching me about God? Seek the things that are above. Okay, but what does that mean? Paul goes on to explain a little bit about what that means. If you're going to seek the things that are above, then you have to set your minds on things that are above, not on things on the earth. So what does that, what does that tell me about God? What does that tell me about his commands, his precepts, his principles? What, what does it tell me about God when it says to put to death that which is uh, immoral in my life? It's telling me something about God. What's it telling me? That he's not any of those things. That, that, that's, um, the, these things are completely separate from him, so if you want to save your mind on him, you must kill these things that don't have anything to do with the Holy God. Absolutely. I mean, it's teaching me that God is pure. Mm -hmm. That God himself is holy. That God values holiness in my life. So it's teaching me something about God in my head. Now my heart. What is this saying? How, how, does this, how is this teaching me to love God and to love others? Anybody? Could it, could it be saying that my relationship with God means more to me than any earthly relationship? Could, could God be saying that to me through this word? And how does it teach me to love others? Well, sexual morality is always a sin against someone else, right? Mm -hmm. So it's teaching me that I value God and I value others by putting others first, all right? But what's the third, what's it saying to my hands? This is where we get real practical. That means I put to death that which is sexual morale, that, that, which, that which is immoral. So, what does that mean for me? Practically, what is that saying to my hands? Well, for me, that, that, may, that may mean I can't watch anything that's rated R or PG-13. That's just, it's saying to me that I can't surround myself with influences that are, that are negative. That maybe I can't surf on the internet alone in the, in the home and no one else is there. It's just practical thing. As you, as you stop and read and reflect the scripture, ask yourself, what does this say to my hand, my heart, and my hands? Now, let's go on. I want you to look with me in verse 8. Thank you. Verse 19. Verse 19. None of your husbands yet, right? Really? Who? Renee. Okay. No, you. No, no, no. Oh, you are. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> so let's right, This verse is really speaking to us. Um, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And the reason I'm bringing this passage out is because in my quiet time this morning, this is what God, mm, to me, this is what God showed me. First of all, what is this thing in my head? It's telling me. That God takes very seriously the relationship that I have in my life. Mm. What's it saying in my heart? It's saying that God wants me to love my wife, and love, love her as I love myself, love her with, 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 a, with a love that seeks to put her interest above mine. Okay? And what's it saying to my hands? Well, don't be harsh. And just between us, in the fence post and the camera. <laughs> I was a little harsh with Jilly last night, just over something. Just, you know, just something got on my nerves and I, I just let it help. And so this morning in my quiet time, God spoke to me about harshness. He spoke to me through his word. But that doesn't happen if you just read, 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 I'm done, click. No. It happens when you take the time, for instance, Chapter 3 is all I read this morning. That's it. It's all I reflected on. Sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's even less. But it gives an opportunity for the Spirit of Christ to speak to my heart, speak to my head, my heart, and my hands. Okay? Any questions? Any comments?